How's it going guys and welcome back to yet another video. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the Nikon A900 and why I think it would be a great starter vlogging camera for you. If you can see the A900 in my hand it's because I'm recording on a Nikon D5600 with a Rode VideoMic Go 10-20mm to lens. If you cannot see this in my hand it's because I'm recording on it and that is what I'm going to be trying to do for the most part of the video. So compared to other compact cameras that are on the market like the G7X Mark II or the Mark III, this one is insanely cheaper. It's also got all your flip screen features and all that sort of stuff uh, that these cameras have. But if you're new to vlogging, you don't want to be paying 400 to 600 pound on a compact camera, you may as well buy like a big DSLR. But if you're just starting out vlogging, you don't want to be paying 400 to 600 pound on a compact camera, you want to get something like this that was about 190 pound, I think I paid for it but they're around that 200 pound mark. I set my expectations quite low for this camera, but honestly, it has very much surprised me. So without going into it anymore, let's talk about some of the good points. So first big positive is, as you guys can see over there, there is not much light coming from it. The low light performance on this camera is truly impressive, way more impressive than I thought it was gonna be. You can kind of tell that this is a car behind me, but there's a cement mixer over there and just in general considering there's only very limited amounts of light coming in here you can actually sort of see me and tell what's going on the next good point is the rich audio quality now i was really worried about this because there's no external mic port so i was worried that if the sound quality was bad then it would be bad and that would be it however as you guys can kind of tell there's quite a rich tone to it and in fact i was quite impressed with the, the audio quality my arm is fully extended out unfortunately and you can see there isn't a massive wide angle like there was with my dslr however what this thing lacks in sort of wide angle, it massively, and I mean massively, makes up for it in zoom. Let me show you guys. So you see that cute little car feet in that grass? It's actually like a field over. So the zoom capabilities of this camera are unreal. One big downside is, as you guys can see, my hair isn't like flying about all over the place. It isn't awfully windy, but I can guarantee you guys can hear like a lot of wind noise, which is pretty unfortunate. And this is with the wind noise reducer on. The actual camera weighs 299 grams, which is hardly anything. In fact, I find it quite a comfortable weight to be able to sort of move around and do stuff. Like it's like a solid, nice amount of weight. Right, so we're in the corner of the shed, and we're only in the corner of the shed because I wanted you guys to hear the auto-focusing noise, which you can probably hear now. If I move my hand about, it should hopefully help with the process. But you can hear these tiny little motor noises um, of it obviously trying to keep up with you, but you can only notice them really if you're in like a quiet spot like this and you talk quietly. However, if you normally talk how you're doing or you're actually sort of recording something that's going on, you're usually all right. To be honest, I was just very impressed with the general quality of the video I was getting. I have currently got a light box in, so do take that into consideration, but I'm currently shooting in 1080p, and the whole thing that I've shot on this has been in 1080p today, but it can go up to 4K, and that's pretty impressive. Like, not even the DSLR that I use goes to 4K. You can also take pretty good photos on this. Unfortunately, there's no raw capabilities, but to be honest, the color reproducing that it does itself to me has, has always been pretty spot on. In fact, it's been quite nice to be able to have photos come out looking so good straight from the camera. That noise I was talking about before, I think you guys can probably hear it now. Can you guys hear that? I'm not even sure it's the autofocus noise, it might even be some other motor. So guys, I'm not saying that the Nikon A900 is the perfect vlogging camera because it's not the best vlogging camera out there. However, if you're just starting to vlog or you want to get into it or you want to get into making little videos and stuff, I think you can go way worse than to buy the Nikon A900 massively because of the price point. Like I say, you can pick these up for, I think they're roughly like 290 to 200 pounds brand new. So with warranty and everything, um, that is like, a seriously good price for the amount that you actually get out of this camera and the amount of stuff that you can do with it. Yes, it's not a G7X Mark II or Mark III, but like I say, when you're starting out, you don't want to be paying 400 to 600 pound for a camera. This can do all the stuff that you want it to be able to do. You don't really need to worry about 120 frames per second and all that if you're just starting. If you essentially want a camera and don't want to have to use your phone to record these vlogs or videos that you want to make, then this is it. Point, shoot, easy as that. Um, 
it's just it's just a really really good camera I'm really really impressed with it I'm really glad that I got it and I can see that it's going to be very useful for my channel one thing that I did notice that I didn't realise because I'd never seen one of these before I bought it the actual flip screen doesn't just sort of flip up here you can pull it all the way out and move it to where you sort of want it like it's just so user friendly it's so good but one thing that I have noticed that I don't like about it that is you guys can see there there's like a black bar either side of the screen and when it's record when I click record like that it goes even smaller so I don't know why you can't record all that space because the lens when it's not recording can actually see more uh, than it can when you're recording I don't know why that is I don't know if there's a way of stopping that uh, but it is very unfortunate and like I say for reference when I'm recording my videos I have to have it about this far away from my body which is like a good that's a good distance um, but again for the price and the amount of, that you can zoom with it and make super lapses and stuff like that like it is a very good camera if you are going to buy this uh, A900 I would also recommend the Manfrotto thing I was a bit skeptical about buying this I know a lot of people rate it really highly um, but I just wanted it because I wanted a little easy stand that I could just sort of throw anywhere and that sort of thing that is why I got it and to be honest with you this is spot on for what I need it's a great little just run and go point and shoot little camera great little quick tripod like it is just fantastic anyway thank you guys for watching this video I hope I've helped with your decision in whether to get a Nikon A900 or not or help you on what you're sort of after for starting your videos Thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed, please go check out some of my other videos and I will hopefully see you guys in another video. Thanks for watching guys. Rack it up, rack it up, I got a bit of the bank to make me a safe house.